Hey, this is Ryan Bowman with WebEminence.com. Thanks for watching this video. This is an important one about optimizing your images for the web. And it's important for everyone, whether you're building your small business website for the first time or you're a web designer who's created hundreds of websites. Everybody should optimize images for the web before they put them on their website. Uh, this is good for two reasons. First of all, it gives your visitors a good experience. It keeps your website uh, loading fast. And a fast loading website is also good for search engines because search engines like to serve up websites that are fast and not websites that lag because of large images. So I'm going to show you what an optimized image looks like on the web and what an unoptimized image looks like on the web and also show you some tools you can use to make sure all your images are optimized for your website regardless of which platform you're using to build your website. So let's go ahead and get started. So let me first show you this example page that displays an optimized image and an unoptimized image. An optimized image is basically a file that is made to be as small as possible so it can load quickly in a web browser. This image on the left is loaded at 100% in this browser. It's about 500 pixels wide. And you'll see the image next to it is displayed in the exact same size but the source image is actually this image down here, which is about 3,000 pixels wide. So this is the same size picture you might take on your smartphone or on a digital camera. So if you were to load this right onto the web and force it down to this 500 pixel width, it would display correctly, but in reality, when I load this, you'll see how long it takes to load. So if I press Control F5 to reload the pictures, You'll see the image on the left loads fast and the image on the right takes a few seconds to load because it's loading a large file. So when you know the size of your image is going to be 500 pixels on your website, it's better to create an original image file that's as close as possible to the 500 pixels wide rather than using a large original file like this and resizing it on your web page to the correct size. Because if you were to do this all over your website, it's going to create pages that are very slow to load because visitors are going to be loading these large pictures every time you display a smaller picture. So if you had a web page loading 10 pictures as large as this one, it could take up to a minute to load the website, which is way too long. Uh, many visitors will leave if it takes more than 10 seconds to load a website. And you'll see this all the time on websites. It didn't take me too long to find a website that had an image optimization problem. A lot of times you'll find it on staff uh, pages where a lot of pictures of people are displayed because people take large format pictures and then, lo and then load them onto the staff page in a smaller size. So if I was to reload this page for example, you'll see this image here takes a minute to load, and the reason it does is because it's actually loading a larger image that is this size. So the smarter thing here would have been to resize this image before it was loaded onto this web page. And it's not a huge deal. In the case of this website, it only takes a few seconds to load. If you're doing this, consistently all of your website you're going to create problems for your visitors with a website that loads slow and search engines are going to also begin to not like your website because it's so slow loading because of all the large images so that's the problem now let me show you the solution and you'll be happy to know that there are many online tools that are free and will allow you to easily take your images and optimize them to the correct size for your website and it'll only take a few seconds for each image. The first tool I'm going to show you is called Free Image Optimizer and you'll find it at imageoptimizer.net and anyone can use this whether you're on Windows or Mac and it's very simple to use. You just go to their home page and you upload the file on your computer. I'm going to use that large image of the house that I had been using in my other example and then you just set some optimization settings like the quality 
and in this case I'm going to choose small file size and set the max width to 500 and click optimize now it's going to upload the file which will take a few seconds because it is a large file and then when it's done it's going to show you the results you'll see it was 3500 pixels wide changed it to 500 pixels it was about five and a half meg and now it's 0.16 meg and you can click download to your computer and it's going to immediately download that file and if I open the file on my computer here's the unoptimized image which at 100 percent is actually this large and then the optimized file is 500 pixels wide so there it is so that's a great way for anyone to use a free tool to optimize their images for the web so really you have no excuse you don't need software you don't need any expensive tools or you don't need to take uh, 10 minutes to optimize images it really only takes a few seconds per image now the second method of optimizing images is specifically for WordPress users those of you who have WordPress websites um, installed from wordpress.org there are a number of plugins available that will automatically optimize your images I'm not going to go into detail on those on this video. I haven't used any of them myself, but in the blog post associated with this video, I link to a post where they describe a few of the top plugins for optimizing images. And here I am on the plugins page for WordPress, and you can see there are a number of them. And all these plugins work a little bit differently. Some of them will create different versions of your image file in different sizes so that the the most optimized image is displayed wherever the image is used some of them actually change the quality of the image so that it is um, as optimized as possible in the smallest file size so you'd have to test these to see which one works best for your needs but using a plugin is a great way if you have a wordpress website to make sure all your images are optimized without creating too much extra work for yourself. I also want to show you how you would optimize images for the web using Adobe Photoshop since it is one of the most popular photo programs in the world. So it's actually what I use. It currently costs twenty dollars per month to use Photoshop. Some of you may have older versions which were just a one-time uh, purchase price but there is a barrier to use Photoshop because there is a cost to it but many of you use it for other things so you can also use it for editing images one of the benefits of Photoshop is you can edit a large number of images at one time using their batch processing so I'm going to show you how I would edit that one image using Photoshop I would just open it and select the large image and here it is opened at 25 percent the next step after the file is open is going to the file menu and selecting save for web or alt shift control s that'll bring up this save for web dialog box where you can select different image formats including gif jpeg and png i usually use png for transparent images or JPEG otherwise so in this case we'll use JPEG and they allow you to change the quality low medium high or based on a percentage using this slider so a lot of times for smaller images I use 70 percent so we'll set it to 70 you don't need to worry about these settings here unless you know what they do and then down at the bottom here is where you would change the size so you can do it by percentage or you can type in the pixel width and if you click out of that box you'll see it resizes it in the preview window and down below it shows you how large the resulting file will be this one is about 68 kilobytes so you could lower this slider even lower to say 35 and you'll see it goes down to 30 kilobytes and you click save and choose your location and then the new file is saved so that's how you can resize images in Photoshop uh, maybe do another video in the future to show you how you can batch process many images 
for those of you who have Photoshop and need to do a lot of images at once. For those of you who want to use software on your computer but you don't want to pay for Photoshop, there is another popular option called GIMP, G-I-M-P, and you can find it at GIMP.org. And this is actually a free open source software that I haven't used before, but I'm going to test it out real quick just to show you how it works. From the research I've done, it works very similarly to Photoshop, and there's a lot of debate online about which is better, but many people use GIMP just because it's free. So here's what the GIMP software looks like. I open the large image, and I've never used this software program before, so some of you who are experts may be able to correct me but um, it appears that the best way to resize an image is going to the image menu and clicking scale image and then typing in my 500 pixel width click scale and then that resize the image and then the best way I can find to export is to click export as if I click Save As, it doesn't appear to give me any options for saving um, different image types. But if I go to File, Export As, I can select JPEG as the type. And after clicking Export, they actually give you the option of selecting the quality. So I could lower that to 70 they give you some other advanced options for changing the quality of the image usually lowering the quality is enough but for those of you who need more advanced options those are available so then I would click export and then the image is saved so now I'm in the folder with the four files that I have the first one is the large file which is three thousand pixels wide you can see it's 5.43 meg this large 2 image is a JPEG image that was created with GIMP and it is 43 kilobytes the one created by the free online tool is 162 kilobytes and then the last one which was created by Photoshop is 31.4 kilobytes so you see Photoshop created the uh, smallest size image without messing around with the advanced settings. Although I did have Photoshop set to 35% quality, so that's probably why it resulted in a smaller file size. But if you scroll through the different files, here's the large image and the three different smaller images. You probably on this video can't tell too much of a quality difference. I could see a little bit, but you could change the level of quality from 0 to 100% depending on the quality that you need and just balance quality with the overall file size that you're looking for. So that's pretty much it. I hope that helps you understand why it's so important to optimize images for the web as well as give you some hints for different tools that you can use to get that done. Since I probably didn't cover everything in this video, make sure to check out the blog post that accompanies this video to get some more information and also leave a comment there if you have a question or maybe a tip that I didn't cover so that it can help everybody else who is reading and watching this video. The link to the blog post is right under this video if you're not there already. And also make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of the future videos. We'll see you on the next one.